Hey, I'm Canyon. I'm a product manager here at Traction. Today, we're gonna to be walking through some of the new features that are a part of the reliability module that's releasing. The first thing we're gonna look at is the ability to group insights. This has been a highly requested feature across the globe. We're excited to now deliver it for you guys. So you'll notice that the insights workflow has been slightly revised. If we go to an insight here, we now click in inspection, but now we get a pop-up. That's because inspections are now a more formal concept in our platform. Uh, within this, you're able to group insights, uh, continuously add more insights to that inspection. And then, when we'll talk about this a bit later, you can also attach prescribed procedures to particular combinations of insight types and equipment types to make sure that your crews are doing exactly what they need to do, inspecting things the way you want them to be inspected. So what we'll do here is we will create a new inspection and we'll give it a name. So this was from a misalignment insight. We'll call this misalignment inspection. Uh, we'll include a date as well, December 9th. Uh, description, the asset seemingly is misaligned. We have the option to add an assignee, uh, configure the priority of this, but most notably, as you'll see here, it calls out that we have four more pending insights that we can link. So let's go ahead and link them. Let's say that the mechanical looseness, unbalance, and mechanical looseness insights, we think these are all associated with this particular problem that we're looking to address. So we can add those. And now we see all of the insights down here and we'll click save. And what you'll notice is that now the status of all of those insights are synchronized. So they just all switch to an inspection and as we move through our workflows now, they'll all be treated the same. So this saves you a ton of time and allows you to maintain a bit more organization in how you are keeping track of your insights and investigating problems, right? Because before it was typical for a customer to maybe save one insight, check the rest, and then use that insight as kind of the, the status tracker for that problem, which Sure, that works, but in terms of a, a proper system of record and maintaining all of the data and, and really learning from your liability history, you'd be losing information. So now you're able to truly preserve every single you know symptom that was basically detected, right? And now you have this full health chart for the asset. So now that we've created the inspection, let's go do the inspection. So you'll see up here in the menu bar, there's now a reliability dropdown. We see inspections and then events, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, if we go over to inspections, we'll see the misalignment inspection that we just created. You'll see that you have a series of status options here. That's great for working with a bigger team. You're able to maintain visibility, see where that inspection is in the process, but then also track all of the time spent associated with that inspection. As we scroll down, we see the insights that we added to this. And now we see a section called procedures. And what you'll note is that this was automatically added in to this inspection. How did that happen? Procedures are a new thing that we just added into the platform. We're gonna go over to that tab. I'm sorry for a quick detour, but this is really cool. So you can create your own procedures. You may already have these. Uh, maybe this is your first time actually formalizing these procedures and building out your reliability program. But this is you know, very standard Google form type workflow uh, setup, checklists, custom questions, prompt the users for photo uploads, signatures, anything you would want your text to collect when they actually go inspect an asset. And the reason that this is so cool is that you can now prescribe these procedures based on combinations of insight types and equipment types. So again, detour number two, but this is worth it. If we go over to the procedures area in the settings menu and go to insights, we see this grid, which is all of our existing combinations of equipment types and insight types. So that means that right now for any asset, if a mechanical looseness insight comes through, it automatically attaches our, our procedure that we wrote down for how to inspect mechanical looseness. So now if we go back to that inspection, we'll see that this was automatically added in. So now when this gets assigned to one of your technicians, it's already there. They go through, select all of the answers that they're seeing, preserve that record of what they found in the inspection and you know really immortalize that data story for this asset, allowing you to learn from it in the future. So. I think we're gonna have to go through and check all these things. Um, we'll just say, okay, for all of these. 
Um, and again, you can make these as short or as long as you so desire. Um, all right, so now we have completed the inspection. Now we have actually gone about doing the inspection. We'll go ahead and check these insights. And this is going to create a new entity in the platform called an event. Uh, you saw that in the drop down menu here. That is basically converting an inspection into a closed ticket, if you will, right? So if we click done here after filling out that inspection, we can in bulk check all of those insights that we associated with inspection. So we'll do check now, and you'll see the status of those change. All of them are here. And now we go and actually say what we found, what we did, all that. So let's say we, we identified a functional failure. Um, there was a missing bolt. Great. Identified failures. This was a performance loss uh, component. We will say it was the, sure, stand and bearings. Obviously, you can select whatever is relevant for you. Uh, cause, excessive vibration, effect, uh, uh, you know, operational interruption. So what we are doing right here is we are doing a root cause analysis. So you are able to actually, you know, not just scurry around and fix all these problems in a circular fashion, but really learn from what happened, maintain that record for your plant, and then revise your maintenance and reliability program moving forward. So then you are able to circumvent these types of problems in the future. So we'll save this. That's now attached to this event. Uh, problem was solved. We'll say yes. Uh, let's say we fixed it. And now we can jump down and add in any other time related information that we want. So we can specify when the downtime actually happened. So let's say it was from you know, Monday to Friday this week. Monday to Friday. Great. Total duration, four days and one minute. Effective repair time. Let's say that, uh, you know, that Thursday we fixed it. Nine hours. So now we see that time to action is automatically calculated. And this is a really big deal about all of the general formalization that's happening here with these workflows. This is allowing you to have real world KPIs associated with your reliability program. So now you actually know accurate mean time before failure. You actually know your mean time to action. And this is real and you can work on those numbers. You can use that to compare those numbers across your plants. This is powerful and this is really exciting. Lastly, what we'll do here is you can either link an existing work order, put in a work order number or create one in TrackOS. Um, so let's say we created this in our uh, maintenance system. We'll say it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Great. So now we can keep track of this as that problem actually gets fixed in the field and then circle back eventually find this and update the status is fixed. Um, we can add in any savings here. Um, so let's say this avoided, um, you know, 24 hours downtime, uh, avoided repair time, 30 hours, sure. Um, any parts we can add, anything like that. Takeaway here is this is super powerful, very high ceiling on this feature. So you can, you know, keep it pretty bare bones and just group your insights, attach that to an inspection, check them all, great, out the door. But if you really wanna do everything under the sun, this supports it. It's very much there for both new users to the platform as well as super high power users. So we'll click save and we're done. So now we have this event. We go over to reliability, go to events. We have that functional failure. So now for that asset, this is frozen in time. We can always go back and reference this, learn from this, have our true system of record. So another thing you'll notice now that we have finished creating our functional failure event is we can add our own non-sensor based events. The reliability module is a big step forward in the traction platform in separating our sensors from your reliability program. This way, alongside everything we're telling you from our sensors, you can add in anything else that's going on in your reliability program. Maybe you just got back an oil analysis. Great, you can register that new event for this asset, have that in the record alongside everything we're detecting with our sensors, turning this into a true asset performance management system. So those are the new features that are now live in your platform with Traction's reliability module. 
Hope this update allows you to simply speed up your workflows with insight grouping, uh, save your team's time and get you faster results through prescribed procedures, linking specific inspection protocols to failure modes and equipment types. And then lastly, get you all the critical KPIs that you have been chasing to make sure that your maintenance program is on track.